Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. How are we doing today? Welcome in, pupper. Thank you for the follow during Maple's raid. It's always great having new people in here. And Polsh, this stream is for you, man. So excited. I know we're not going to do it traditional Labrador Sunday dinner, but let's do the West Coast version, I guess. Or we'll just call it Kate's version of Sunday dinner. I am kind of inspiring it off of what my mom used to make for us. So I think we've all had like an awesome one pan roasted chicken dinner from probably our mom or our grandma at some point in our lives that we will probably always remember. Sounds delicious. Well, that's all we want then. Is uh, my audio lagging a little bit right now? Can you guys let me know if everything is synced up? Because I don't think it is. It just doesn't look right on OBS. It's all good? Okay, awesome. Thank you for that. Okay, and then as you can see on the stove, we have our pecan pie that I made last night after the stream, and I have not cut into it or anything yet. I thought I would save that for you guys since we kind of ran out of time yesterday doing the pasties, which is totally okay. Plus the pie would have had to sit. Okay, we just have a spider coming in to the stream with us. Wait for it. It had to sit before we cut it anyways. He's right here. He's like, no, don't cut the web. I don't know where he's coming from. Extermination. This is my house. You don't go here, bro. <laughs> okay, carrying on. So yeah, the pecan pie, we're gonna cut it today, but it had to sit anyways before we cut into it last night. So we didn't even bother with it because it was too late. Yeah, spider meat. Extra protein. I saw one crawling on the ceiling. He's still over there. He's been in here for a couple days now though. I think he might've got lost. Hope he doesn't die though. You received the yes. What kind of yes? And then we also have in the pot on the stove, the beef stock that we made yesterday. So the one I made on stream only cooked for, let's say three hours, which is definitely not enough time to extract the full flavor from the bones. So I used what I wanted for the gravy last night and then I filled the pot back up with cold water and we let that go overnight and until two o'clock today. So almost, let's say 20 hours it cooked for. And the color is so much more rich now. We let it reduce by half, but it was only at a very, very low simmer. So that's how you should do your beef stock. Pretty excited to see the color and the flavor difference compared to, let's say the three hour one yesterday. It's gonna be drastic. <laughs> Pepper, never mind. So we have that to do today as well as our dinner. So let's go through our little list. So we gotta season and stuff the chicken with some herbs. We have to cut up all of our vegetables and season them as well. Wash our greens and our strawberries and slice them up. And then we have our goat's feta in the fridge that we're just gonna crumble on top of the salad. I think I have a leftover kind of herb and lemon vinaigrette to put on this. I thought that would be really nice and fresh. Cause in the summertime, like sometimes it's really, really hot and you don't feel like turning on the oven, right? So for something kind of more summertime fresh, I thought I would pair a salad with this, something green and crunchy instead of everything just being roasted and cooked. And then I thought I would do up some maple candied nuts because we're doing kind of a Canadian theme today for dinner. And then maybe just some fresh basil chopped on top because I just picked a bunch this morning. 
So obviously we'll have to roast the chicken and the veg and we're gonna do this all at one time. So it's gonna be like a nice one pan, easy, simple dinner that you could even prep ahead of time. And then all you have to do is throw in the oven. I'm going to start creating by getting ice cream for the pies. Okay. And then I have some bok choy tops that are flowering. So I clipped those off and it's totally okay to eat still. So I thought I would just quickly steam those up and put them in with the roasted chicken and the veg when we go to plate it up later. And then we'll plate our pecan pie. And that is pretty much it, guys. I do have a question of the day, but I don't think we'll do like our little food for thought topic until later in the stream when more people get here. Yeah, hi, Betty. Bye, Betty. <laughs> going to the store we are good though just finishing up my vietnamese iced coffee don't know if you guys ever drink that but it is my favorite favorite way to drink coffee and it seems drinking it this way it doesn't really affect my anxiety at all unless i'm just like over that i'm over my little anxious hump and i can deal with caffeine again Hey, Death, how are you? What makes it Vietnamese? So a Vietnamese coffee is really, really strong brewed coffee. So I did mine just in a French press, but I only do half of the amount of water to grounds. So it's kind of like brewing an espresso, I would say. But otherwise, they have this little metal tray that they put over your cup and it just slowly drips in, like drip by drip. And then in the bottom, they put like a pretty good layer, I would say probably a tablespoon of sweetened condensed milk, the stuff that you get in the can. I think it's Eagle brand. And then as the coffee drips, it kind of melts into your sweetened condensed milk and then you mix it up and they give you just a glass with ice to pour your coffee and condensed milk mixture into. So that's what I did and it's so good. All is well, working on a menu for tomorrow. Yay, death. That means you're gonna be streaming or are you just cooking? Okay, so let's go over just a little bit of history for Polsch. Cause I know you said originally that this was based on like the Labrador Sunday dinner, but looking into it, they typically used beef. Whether it was corned beef or maybe just a brisket and it's typically always boiled together. So let's go through what is called a jigs dinner, which is traditionally cooked on the East Coast, so opposite of where I am, on Sundays. Eagle Brand sweetened condensed milk is like the primo. Use the leftover stuff to make during their sauce. Exactly, so good. Okay, so jigs dinner also called boiled dinner or cooked dinner. It's a traditional meal commonly prepared and eaten on Sundays in many religions around the Atlantic provinces of Canada. Corned beef and cabbage was the favorite meal of Jigs, the central character in the popular long running comic strip, Bringing Up Father. Okay, I did not know that. By George McManus and Zeke Zeckley after whom the dish is likely named. So it's actually named after an actor. That's pretty cool. Learning ways to make carrot cake. So far you don't want pecans, you want walnuts. Yes, walnuts 100% man. And are you gonna put any fruit of sorts into it? Probably of the dried version. Pecan rant. <laughs> do you not like pecans death because that's pretty much my favorite nut i think okay so the name of the dish jigs dinner is also occasionally rendered as okay it just says jigs instead of two g's it just uses one that's not very exciting or it can also be called just jd it's like, hey, what are you having for dinner on Sunday? Oh, my mom's making some JD instead of KD. Way better. <laughs> huh. 
Not a big fan, but you'd eat them any day if you were hungry. Fair enough, dude. We are all entitled to our own palate opinions. So the meal most typically consists of salt beef or corned beef, and you can actually buy it in buckets already pre-made. Or sometimes they have it in like vacuum sealed bags as well. Either one I think is good. But I think instead of, if you don't make it yourself, it's probably going to be very, very salty. So we may have to like rinse it under some cold water just to even out the seasoning in it. That's what I've always found. And this gets boiled together with potatoes, carrot, cabbage, turnip, and also turnip greens at the end. So I guess that's kind of similar to me steaming the bok choy tops is we're getting a little bit of greenery in there. And then peas pudding and figgy duff, which what are those? So peas pudding is a savory pudding dish made of boiled legumes aka split yellow peas with water, salt, and spices. And it's often cooked with a bacon or ham hock. And it's actually pretty popular in northeast of England. So obviously that's, that gets translated over to the east coast of Canada, where most of the English settlers arrived. I've never had that polish. I've never heard of any of these. And figgy duff talk to me a traditional bag pudding so they actually have special bags to cook the pudding in and it gets cooked in hot liquid so a traditional bag pudding from the province of newfoundland and labrador shout out to posh fist pump man and it's most commonly served as a part of a jigs dinner it's also sometimes called a raisin duff so I'm guessing there is raisins in it. And then these two bags get immersed in the rich broth that the meat and the vegetables create. Condiments are likely to include mustard pickles, pickled beets, cranberry sauce, butter, and a thin gravy made from the drippings of the roasted meat. So we still have a little bit of the beef gravy from yesterday. Maybe I'll just heat that back up today to serve with the chicken but it's gonna be pretty juicy anyway so do you really need gravy probably not but it's always good to have i know some people can't really eat roast chicken without the gravy if you're picky like that and that is okay the bags are usually gifts for people from outside the province anyone in the province usually uses an old shirt <laughs> that is awesome gotta make use of that so the leftover vegetables from a jigs dinner are often mixed into a pan and fried to make a dish known as cabbage hash. That sounds good. Or corned beef and cabbage hash. Much like bubble and squeak in the UK. And they eat this for breakfast. I would be so down with that. I'm not huge on like the boiled textures and a lot of people can definitely overdo it where the chicken will just come out dry or same with the beef if you're using the salt beef. And then if you overboil your root vegetables, then they're just gonna fall apart and be mush. So there is a little bit of cooking technique involved in making this, but I talked to Polish today and he said, he is so down if I just roast this up. And I think that's how, if this was made on the West Coast, that's how it would be made. So this is also also a traditional St. Patrick's Day meal in North America. But honestly, this is the first time I've ever heard of this meal, Jigs Dinner. It does sound good though. I would like to try it with the corned beef, maybe make the beef myself and do it that way. <laughs> I make the food way better. Simple is always the best though. Like, you know I don't do that fancy of food. I just cook it right. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys today. 
Okay, so first order of business. I think we'll start by straining the beef stock. Let's make a little bit of room on the stove top, even though we don't really need it at all until we steam the bok choy. But we'll get that done. That way it can start to cool off. And then we'll move on to prepping the chicken and the vegetables. And then obviously the salad can be done a little bit later. And same with the pecan pie. I know the guys are supposed to be home pretty early today, so I'm not gonna cut the pie until Sammy's home. And Betty just went to get ice cream for it, so I think she's getting pretty excited for it too. It's always salt beef. Corned beef you don't use for it unless you're in New Brunswick. Ah, okay, so my aunt just moved to New Brunswick, so I'll have to ask her about it. And she actually says she likes it a lot compared to the West Coast. So that is really cool. And I'm excited to at some point come out and visit you guys. Paul, Sh Sammy and I will plan a good trip. It'll probably be longer, like two to three weeks. So we can spend quite a bit of time actually seeing the East Coast of Canada. Telling anyone who does it the other way is considered blasphemy. Just blasphemy. Mama, how are you? I'm just going to finish this off before we start. Yeah, ice cream. Just mention ice cream. Mama's here, guys. <laughs> Betty's going to get some ice cream for the pie. Should we get a close-up on this too? I think so. So what I noticed is I don't think I had enough crust portioned out because I had to roll it pretty thin to fit in this dish. And as it cooked up, it actually shrank. So that was probably my fault whether I put maybe too much water in the pie dough, I'm not sure, but it still looks really nice and flaky. So I guess we won't really know what went on until we cut into it, but it does look really nice. And this little line around the center, this part was like puffed up in the oven. And then as it cools, it settled down, but it is very crisp and crunchy on top. Like you shouldn't really be able to mush this but I think I did pretty good. This is only my second ever pecan pie. And maybe the pan had something to do with it too. Because sometimes you can find pie pans that have the crimped edges on it. And I find that when you crimp it onto the pan, it's more likely to just stay up around the edge than to try and shrink down. But maybe because this is more of like a sugary custard filling, maybe the sugar just got really hot and kind of pulled the crust in. I don't know. Those are just my thoughts on what happened, but I'm still proud of it. We'll see how it tastes. Gravy is a must because you're talking about people boiling the veg until it falls apart. So all the flavors in the water that you make the gravy from. Yeah, that makes sense. Banana and toffee ice cream. That sounds so good. Triple scoop. You would mama. I admire that dedication. And I can't eat as much ice cream as I used to be able to eat. I used to be like a fiend, but I can't do dairy the same way anymore. As long as it's edible, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so we need a pot again and a strainer. And then if we really want to get a clear, clear stock, we can line the strainer with cheesecloth. So maybe we will do that. Do, 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 do. There's the setup. This is how my cheesecloth comes. I usually find it hanging in like the middle of the aisle in the supermarket and maybe the baking aisle. But it's typically not like in the shelf. It's usually just hanging on one of those plastic little strips. You would rather have a pudding than a dinner. <laughs> I think you have a sweet tooth like Sammy does.
So all I do to cut the cheesecloth usually is like pull your length that you want and then give it a good twist. And I find that this is a lot easier to cut it rather than having it straight. Typically you can use a paring knife if it's sharp enough. Oh, destruction. Too much of a sweet tooth. Yeah, I might have to agree with that. Boom, perfection. Since we spent so much time on this stock, we wanna make sure that it's strained properly. Can't just do a half-ass job at the end. Gotta treat it with love the whole way through. And now I'm gonna guess that the amount of stock we're gonna get maybe two liters. But look at that color pouring out compared to yesterday. So much different. And just be careful if you're doing this while it's hot and like big chunks drop in there, it might splash you. Sometimes I just give the pot like a little shake if you feel like it's just going to take a tumble in there. And especially because these bones are really big. I might just end up using some tongs to transfer those first. That way we won't have stock everywhere. These guys are big. But like look at all that marrow in there has been cooked in. And this, if you have doggos, because these bones are already kind of cooked and the fat's rendered out, your dog would love you for this. Just cool it off first. But you'll be surprised that they can actually like get their tongue in there and clean out that marrow. And it's good for them in like small doses, but I've noticed if you give too much, then they're likely to have the poops just because of so much fat. Yeah, pupper. It's good for the doggos too. Do I smell what the rook is cooking? Oh no. What is the rook cooking today? I'm excited that you're cooking, man. Even after your crazy busy week. And that is that. Actually, maybe I will leave this pot here because then I'll just transfer the strainer to it. The runny poos. I didn't want to say it, Mamed, so thank you for saying that. <laughs> you tend to just use ground beef, so you haven't made any beef stock. Lots of chicken stock, though. Yeah, always have it frozen. That's That was my plan. I was like, Kate, we'll get five pounds of beef bones and I'll just make a batch. That way, whenever I need it, I can just pull it out. Steampunk, how are you? <laughs> yeah, death. You can't lead us on like that and then say not yet. You see how excited I got? Oh, in this pot here, we have made liquid gold. We definitely want to strain all that out. We could also transfer it to the pot and just pour in whatever leaks out as we deal with this. So let's have a look here. Is You can see the little fat slick. Let's come back over here. It's not that bad though. So the way that I like to do this, I don't usually skim it while it's still warm because I find you just get a lot of waste. Typically I do it with a ladle and when you get near the end, I find that most of your stock goes in the ladle instead of the fat. So I like to just cool it off 
And then the fat will make a nice hard layer on top. And then all you have to do is spoon that off. And then you have a really nice clear stock. Rook, you're still programming a bit. All right, dude. But at least you're at home. So I know you're going to start having drinks soon. <laughs> start kicking back. You're going to have leftover teriyaki chicken and veg. That's an easy one. Pepper. Man, you're still singing that from yesterday. I was in the stream still when you guys were doing song requests with that. You can see my face in the stock. Epic. What's up? <laughs> and then this is where these cups come in handy. So my deli cups that are one liter. That's how I like to pack stock. And I think all we're going to do is pour it into there and let it cool off. And then to freeze it, you always want to bring this as cold as possible before you freeze. And that way you will avoid any freezer burn. So I'm going to put these in the fridge probably overnight and then put it into the freezer. You've not watched the end of the stream from yesterday. Bad mama. Oh man, those pasties were so good. Really, really filling though, I will say. And it's totally okay, Mama. You have all weekend to watch it. And keep in mind, whenever you're freezing stuff, you need to leave room at the top for it to expand, especially when it's all liquid. So I like to always leave like an inch almost. We'll see. Maybe even closer to half an inch is okay. Perfection. Two liters. How is that estimation though, guys? Sorry about that. <laughs> Yum. So you can already see the fat layer starting to form. Let me just lift this up. Boop. So there we go. So that's actually gonna draw in all the impurities as they float up to the top. So that's why it's always good to remove that. And then I think once that solidifies a bit, then we'll taste it. Cause if you taste it now, you're just gonna get like a lot of the beef fat in your spoon. But I know by the color that it's gonna be really good. It was well worth that extra time. You make two cups of stock into tubs and freeze them. Then when it's frozen solid, you pop them into Ziploc bags. Nice. That's a great way to do it as well. But I can just tell, like, the color of this, it looks like a roasted beef gravy. So we did good, guys. We put in that work. It had to happen. Yeah, I will. Well, you don't have to remove the fat before you freeze it because fat's actually like a natural preservative. So even if you didn't want to freeze that, leave the fat layer on top in the fridge and it will last at least two weeks. Because once that fat seals it over, no oxygen is getting into there. And oxygen is what breeds bacteria. So once you seal that with fat, you should be good to go for a bit. Okay, so we strained our stock. Next up, I think let's work on the chicken just so that it's done. Then we'll do the veg after. The fat's already separated. Looks like a beef black and tan. It's a space saver, Paul. Yes. Yeah, it's always good to kind of organize your freezer and make that space for stuff. Rather than like just leaving it in like big chunks, I always try to make my Ziploc bags like nice and flat and then you can just stack them on top of each other. You make two gallons at a time. One liter of stock is usually too much. Yeah, exactly. Because you're, you're by yourself pretty much, right? Whereas I'm cooking for three other people. Wow, plywood. That's pretty rude. I hope your Friday is well, though. I'm going to take that negativity and just throw it out the window. Bye. Bye. 
I think your head needs a shake. <laughs> okay, let's get into our chicken. And she's a pretty big one. So this is already trussed for us, but I want to take this apart so that we can stuff stuff inside of the cavity. And that way as it cooks, it kind of steams from the inside out. And we also want to make sure that we get the seasoning all up in the crevices. Getting into this chicken business. Thanks, Weeda boys. I appreciate the love. I know, right? I don't know if I'm going to keep buying chicken from Costco. It just keeps getting like bigger and bigger every time. And what we want to do typically when you have a whole chicken like this is I like to rinse out the inside, especially if you're serving it roasted whole, just to make sure there's like no organs and stuff left in there. So we're just going to do that with cold water and then we will make up our little rub, I think. So we have to chop some herbs and I think I'll do like a nice Dijon mustard rub and salt and pepper. We're going to stuff it, yeah, Weeda boys, with lots of fresh herbs from the garden. And if you have a lemon as well, but I don't have a lemon, so we're just going to do herbs, which is just as good. paper towel on this plate. So we want our chicken nice and dry before we go to rub it. Boop. Your mom's grandma used to freeze glass cups to make drinks colder. That is refreshing. You use stainless steel shakers. Oh, nice, like a bar shaker. I think I'm gonna order the bar set today. And also the potato masher that I need. And the uh, whipping siphon, the tips for it. So I can't find any by the brands that we have, but there is one called ISI that, I mean, even if you order from Amazon, it's pretty easy to return. So if it doesn't end up fitting, at least I know I can return it with no fuss. So benefit of having Prime, that's for sure. And I noticed that the rates did not go up, even though they said they were gonna go up. Salmonized yearly rate did not budge at all. So I don't know if it's locked in already, Okay, our bird has been bathed and toweled off. Now we are ready to get its dressing ready. Feeling like making some eggies, nice pepper. I'm just gonna wash my hands off. We don't wanna cross contaminate with our raw chicken. That's a no, no. Grab my kitchen towel. And then we're gonna grab the herbs out. What brand of chicken do I get there? I think it's Lilydale. But I did find there is a farm here called Wild Woods. And that's who supplies the restaurant that I work at. So I think once they are getting ready to like butcher again, I'm gonna put in an order with them. 
because all of their stuff is like free range and not given like pellets or anything like that. You never see anyone pat dry chicken and that's how you get such crispy skin. Exactly, emo girls. And how are you? It's been a while. Okay, so this bag, I'm just gonna use the parsley in this bag and we're gonna use that whole bunch. No face cam. Uh, we're getting into the foods right now. Face is not important. The food is. And we'll grab a couple things of sage. Our thyme. And did I grab the bag with the rosemary? I might not have. Okay, so the other bag has rosemary in it. I'm going to take out just a little bit more time because we're going to put some on the inside as well. Your buddy has a lot of land and wants to get into growing chickens. He knows that you know raising stuff and asks you to help. Oh, the black chickens. Nice. That would be so good. That is great to hear though. I have total respect for anyone that wants to kind of better the world in that way. Oh, they for sure are pumped, pupper. Unless you're getting organic chicken, your chickens are for sure being pumped with a salt solution to make them look more full. That's a fact. And it's so bad. Like a lot of people don't realize that. I'm just gonna turn this light off as well. Don't need it right to meow. And that glare just bugs me still. And the other thing I'm getting out of the fridge right now is some Dijon mustard. I always like to use that to pretty much rub any meat down that you're gonna roast. So the sage will chop to put into the outside rub. We won't put any on the inside cavity, I think. And then the rosemary, probably chop up that much. And then this will go inside. All of this time will be put in the cavity as well and then we'll chop that and then the parsley we will chop up half of it to go in the mustard rub and then the other half can be put inside but we are getting flavor from both the inside and the outside so it's not going to be bland at all radishes have been coming out of the ground yay polish Speaking of radishes, I just pulled all of my notes today. They were pretty small, so I left them in there, but then they just ended up getting so woody. So I did end up like throwing out quite a few today that just weren't edible anymore. They're so hard. But now at least we have that space. We have a couple of rows to maybe plant something else for the rest of the season. And we're just gonna pick the herbs to chop off of the stem. Because the stem is pretty tough. And as you cook that, it will get even more hard. You're a horrible person, Emo Girls. I doubt that. Oh, you mean not the live chicken? Oh yeah, after they butcher it is when they pump in that salt solution with an injector. And some of the chicken you buy will actually say that on it. Okay, lastly, just our rosemary. Your mom lives out in the country and raised animals. You wish you could have the same life. 
well, you could. It's never too late to start something new. If that's what you're wishing for, you should do it. It brings up the weight, emo girls. And such to say they make it juicier. Yeah, and when people actually just don't know how to cook it. Factoid. Okay, I'm just going to get a little bowl. And then we'll put the chopped herbs into there. Death, that's why you prefer raising your own livestock. 100%. I really still want to get some ducks. Maybe not to butcher, but definitely for the eggs. It's just really fulfilling when you raise vegetables or animals. And all of the herbs for the rub, we're going to dice it or chop it quite fine. I think the only way to solve that problem though, death, is to stop buying it. Like we literally have to put those bigger companies out of business and start supporting the smaller farmers that honestly do not get paid as much as they should. But they take such good care of their animals, you think it would be the other way around. But that has to go kind of with anything in the food industry is you're always going to battle against farmer's market versus the supermarket or even the livestock farm compared to the factory and even the chain restaurants versus your mom and pops but I think that all has to do with passion is the people that care are willing to not make as much money because that is their passion in life. Okay, there's our parsley. Let's move on to our rosemary. And I'm chopping these all separate because they are all, are all different sizes. So if you put the rosemary in with the parsley, this is a lot more tough, so it's not gonna chop up the same way. And you'll probably end up just mashing the parsley by the time the rosemary is chopped. You want to learn how to cut things up fine like that. Well, the best way to do it is to hold your knife. So the way to grip your knife, ugh, my cut there, is to put it in your hand like this. You can see my callus here. <laughs> I actually have a knife callus. Most chefs do. And that's where our knife rests all the time when we chop. And then your four fingers go under and your thumb rests right here. And that's how you have control of your blade. And then I always put my hand here for like a little bit of extra help to not let the blade go side to side. When they deal with mass amount of food, you have to though. I hate to say it, but you're dealing with numbers and weight versus humane. Yep. Bring cost down and such sucks sort of like in war how you sacrifice people to win a place yeah it's just how the world is yeah I'm starting to realize that but I guess it's up to you to decide what you want to support and as I'm growing older I'm realizing how important it is to I guess consume food that has been raised sustainably because that food is what powers you. It's like if you're putting bad gas in your car, it's not gonna run right. The same goes for your body. Hey, Hollow, how are you? Where do I get these ingredients? All of these herbs are from the garden, except for the parsley is from the farm. some of the easiest things to grow and you can even grow them inside just on the windowsill just need a nice sunny spot that's pretty warm but you can grow them year round me making food right now inspires you that is so awesome 
awesome pupper. That is all I wanted to do with this channel is to help people want to cook at home again with awesome ingredients. Rather than just like copping out and buying something that's processed, I'm just cutting the stem off the stage and I always like to just cut it in half first. You can kind of stack it up and then just chop it fine. And then we'll go over it probably once more to get it chopped just a little bit finer. have been chopped so our next step is to mix in the mustard and then we'll kind of create a nice rub that's going to stick to the chicken skin and then once this rub is on then we will season it because the salt and pepper is going to stick to our mustard mixture you would grow your own ingredients but you don't really know how to start any recommendations there is a ton of resources on youtube is what i have been using for my gardening because there is still a lot of stuff that I don't know. But I would just recommend going into your green, local greenhouse and maybe talking to whoever works there and just saying, hey, I would like to maybe grow my own herbs or vegetables. Do you have any recommendations or tips? And then they will maybe help you choose some plants that you like. And then they can guide you to the soil you need and Typically all herbs grow really well in pots. So that's how I grow all of my herbs instead of like in a big area. I think that's enough mustard. So what is that? Probably two tablespoons worth. You've got basil growing now. It's healthy and growing daily finally. Yeah, I mean, the first basil plant that we got died within, I would say, three weeks. Is it just did not want to grow at all. So we finally got a new one last week and it's doing really, really well in the spot we have it. So I don't know if we just got like a faulty plant or what, but I'm happy to have basil again. Okay, there we go. So there's our Dijon mustard and herb mixture. And all of these herbs complement poultry and even pork really well. So you could even rub this on like a pork loin and do the exact same thing that I'm doing with the chicken. And it'll be just as good. Okay, so now we're gonna get up close and personal with our chicken, just a little bit. I think I'm gonna start by stuffing it with the herbs before I get my hands messy. So you just literally have to open up the cavity and stuff your herbs in. And like I said earlier, a halved lemon is really good in here as well. Yeah, go to a real greenhouse, not your Walmart super center. You know, those people are just there to kind of bring in the plants that you buy but sometimes they can be knowledgeable depending on obviously who they hire hollow you have basil and spring onion in small pots and they are great yeah it's so easy to grow stuff in pots but i would also recommend having a hole in the bottom of the pot because herbs like soil that's well drained so i just spoon our mixture over top and then we'll just use our hands to rub it all over the skin. And if you don't like mustard or you're scared of using it, you could use butter melted instead. Or not even melted, I would just say softened. But rub it under the skin instead. Mm -hmm. 
you don't have any local greenhouses. Well, then you have to make with what you have. Oh, well, if you have a farm, that's even better. Either go there and talk to them or just message them if you can and ask for their advice or if you can talk to them. Farmers are very humble people. And I'm sure they would be more than willing to help you start up your own little garden of sorts. Get in there in the little wing crevice, pull it out. And on the other side as well. And obviously all around in the leg Definitely not feeling the best on my cut, but whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. <laughs> Obviously, the more surface area that you rub down, the more flavorful it's going to be when it cooks. Let's move over to this side. And I don't really do the bottom too much. But you can try and get some down there if you have a little bit extra on the plate or something. But we are going to roast the bird breast side up. Some people do like to roast chicken breast down. They say it is more juicy that way, but... As long as you do this at a lower temp, I think you're fine. It won't dry out. Okay. Our chicken has been massaged. Reno. <laughs> Thanks for the host. Welcome in. How was your Friday? So I'm gonna wash my hands with some soap because we were just touching the raw chicken. And now we're moving on to the salt and pepper. Hey, Matt. <laughs> How are you, man? Yeah, we are literally violating the chicken today on stream. The remaining farmers in your town aren't that humble. Boo earns. That's pretty sad, Polish. I would, uh... Give them a stern talking to. You've been spatchcocking every chicken for the last couple years now. That's a great way to roast chicken as well. Because it does roast up a little bit quicker than doing it this way. So guys, what spatchcocked is, is you cut out the backbone underneath. And then you're able to open up the chicken. So you have the breast and the legs and the wings all kind of butterflied out. <laughs> Hollow, you don't have any farms, but you have many coffee plantations. That's cool. Your Friday's going great, Reno. That is good to hear. So is mine. Had a great walk at the beach this morning. Did my yoga. I've been trying to keep up with that. And it's crazy how, like, if you deal with an anxiety, how much tension gets built up in your body that you don't even realize. So the amount of like cricks and cracks that have been coming out of this, this unit in the past few weeks is crazy. But I think it'll save me money and I won't have to get like a massage to help with it. Ah. So we just wanna try and season as much as possible. I think it's okay if we don't season the backside because there's not a ton of meat there anyways. If anything, you could add some salt after it's cooked. And plus, we don't want to flip this over and then have all of that seasoning stick onto the plate. So I think that's good. And you want to be very generous with the salt. So I would say probably two teaspoons worth. 
just because this bird is actually quite large and anything with a bone in it will take a little bit more seasoning as it cooks. They're not socially approachable. I feel like they're not doing their justice then. It's like, why are you a farmer if you're not willing to like teach what you know? They're kind of part of the problem then. Oh, spatchcock Cornish hens, nice. Yeah, nice hot bath with Epsom salts. That is what I typically do on Saturdays when I get home from work. I've been doing that as well with some essential oils. Okay, I'm gonna leave you with this chicken for like 30 seconds. I'm just gonna go take a bathroom break and then we will be moving on to the root vegetables. Just put this guy on the stove top. <laughs> the pecan pie. Honestly, I've had to wait to eat this pecan pie for almost 24 hours now. The struggle is real, Reno. And here is our roasting setup. I'll show you guys what I have going on. So I have a big roasting pan, pretty much what you would roast a turkey in. And I'm putting this metal rack with little feet on it to raise the chicken up so that we get air circulation underneath and that way the skin will get crispy everywhere instead of having that like soggy weird chicken skin on the bottom always. And I'm going to line it with parchment and then we'll just place the vegetables around this. And as it cooks, we'll probably stir the veggies two to three times as they cook because we're going to kind of base them with the chicken juices as it cooks out. So that's a really good way to roast a chicken. If you don't have a pan like this, you can use a baking sheet. Just be aware that you might get quite a bit of juices coming out. So you don't want to overflow the baking sheet. So let's get into our root veg. Got some carrots. I got half of a rutabaga. An onion to roast in there. A couple of little sweet potatoes. So this is different than a yam. Is this flesh is actually white, like the rutabaga. We have a shallot here, some garlic, and then some new German butter potatoes from the farm. Refill time, Rook. What did you refill, dude? Probably that much is going to be enough for the four of us. I think that's more than enough. Okay, so we have to start by, I would say just peeling these two. We don't have to peel the German butter potatoes, especially when they're new. So you can see how thin the skin is. Is typically when you give these a nice little wash or a scrub in the sink, this will kind of just peel away. 
And as you can see, I'm kind of just peeling it away with my fingers. But it doesn't have to be peeled off because as this roasts up, that's just going to get crispy and delicious in the oven. So as long as your potatoes are clean and washed, you don't have to do much else. And leaving the skin on actually leaves more nutrients in there for us. Put in the chicken in the oven, Matt. Yes, sir. Refill your typical light beer and juice and vodka. <laughs> Love it, Rook. Cheers, dude. I'm waiting for Sammy to get home, and then I'll probably crack something with you guys. I think they were picking up beer today on the way home. There we go, all cleaned up. Let's do a little bit of peeling. Oh, actually, you know what? We're not using these big carrots, because I picked some up from the farm this week. They're a lot smaller, but I know they're gonna be so tasty. So I would way rather use this. Hello, little bunch of carrots. And these ones, we don't have to peel. You just have to give them a little wash, get that outer layer of dirt off. So maybe I'll just leave them in this bunch, give them a little scrubby, and then probably just roast these guys whole. You thought I was going to roast it first? What? We are roasting it. Oh, beer roasted chicken. Yeah, beer butt chicken. Really good. roasting. It's pretty much like the French technique of Poel. I don't even know what that means, Matt. And you say you know nothing cooking wise. Frying pan. Poel just means frying pan. You have made something. You call it a bagel. <laughs> Very creative of you. So we just want to cut the green off of the carrots. You shouldn't have to waste too much here. I always find it easier to just leave it bunched up and cut them off like this. Same goes with radishes and even beets actually. There's our carrots, but I think we'll cut just the root tip off because that can be pretty stringy. And typically when it cooks, it just gets hard and weird. It doesn't really soften up. Is that a homeless bagel? Oh man, Rick. Stove top cooking first. Do we use the juices and keep basting it while we cook it and then put it in the stove? So we're gonna roast it at a pretty high heat, Matt, like 425 Fahrenheit. And then yeah, as it roasts, we will baste it with the juices that come off and also kind of cook the vegetables in those juices as well. Keeping all that flavor together. Just put those carrots aside. We'll move on to our sweet potato. So look at the flesh here, how nice and white it is. 
And these are actually really good grilled whole. You almost get this like caramel flavor from the little bit of char on the skin. And the first time I had these grilled was actually in Thailand from a street vendor. And that's all they were serving is these little sweet potatoes cooked over a charcoal grill of sorts on their street cart. And then all they would do is literally give it to you with like a napkin. And then all I would do is like split it open and just eat the flesh out. If the skin was like clean enough, I would eat it. Sometimes it would just get too dry though. Cheapest little snack ever. Cubby, how are you, man? It's been a little bit. Looks like a good dinner coming tonight. Yeah, hopefully giving you guys some inspiration for what to cook this weekend. Thanks for the biddies as well, dude. That is much appreciated. You love the crispy skins of roasted potatoes. Me too, man. But look how fast this is oxidizing. So we better move quick. And so we're gonna base our vegetable sizing off of the carrots. You want everything to cook perfectly pretty much within an hour, which is how long the chicken should take. So cut your vegetables accordingly, which will be larger in size for sure. So maybe something like that. Still bite size though is the best way to do it. Rook, thanks man. Thank you, thank you guys. Spoils on a Friday. Maybe we will just get a bowl because we will end up dressing this stuff. Maybe we'll use like some kind of fancy salt today to dress it. Put a little bit of extra flavor and that will also complement the chicken still. <laughs> Rook has to one up Cubby. Not even showing that love. So here's our rutabaga, aka turnip. And this is so good roasted up. Really good with both chicken and beef. So let's just cut it into slices. Yeah, it's never a contest. The peeps just want to show their love. And then we'll cut it down this way and then cut chunks out of it. Like that. <laughs> Pepper's like, it's just a joke. And then our potatoes, maybe we'll just cut them in half. Obviously, if it's larger, you can cut it a little bit different. Or maybe I'll do quarters. I don't think so, though. Thirds might actually be good. So just cut them like that. I think that looks great. You got to be careful with your bits. Your last card got deactivated for fraud. They're like, yo, bro. Someone's using up all your biddies. You are out of control. I'm just cutting off the uh, sad little pieces of potato that got damaged, AKA wormholes, the worst. You know it's better to use instead of a knife so you don't stab yourself. This little thing on the peeler is used to take out the eyes, which is what that's called, the darker pieces. Bam. Use thirds, yeah, it messes with people. Gotta keep them on their toes. 
I know I totally forgot about it just because I didn't use it to peel the potatoes. Hilarious. And if you have, ever have a suggestion, Pepper, don't be afraid to let me know. I'm uh, quite open-minded on different cooking techniques. The more we learn together, the better. Holy, this one uh, got straight destroyed. We were actually talking about this. This was our topic for food for thought yesterday. Is like all of the vegetables with holes in them from insects, most of that gets thrown out before it even makes it to the grocery store. And like all we have to do is cut that out and it would be perfectly edible. So like, our vision of this like perfect vegetable is like seriously causing world hunger. The amount of veggies I see that don't get used at the farm when we're harvesting, insane. Like I was pulling up beets yesterday that were maybe like this, really, really small. And I was like, these would make such good pickles. But like, I don't think I'm allowed to take that stuff home. Okay, so the shallot, maybe I'll put the shallot in the chicken. For like a little bit of aromatic and then we'll just dice up the onion to mix in with our root veg. Cause that onion, when it gets that nice little char on it, it becomes so sweet and that strong onion flavor goes away. So I think we'll just cut that in half just so some of the aromatics can be released. And I will probably only use half of this onion. We don't want to overdo it. Emotional burn. <laughs> I like to yell at my potatoes to soften them up. I like your style. You're a bit of a starter cook. Well, you gotta start somewhere, pupper. I've not always been a good cook like this. It took years of practice and making those mistakes and learning from them. You learned a lot from your mom. I learned a lot from my mom as well. And I think the younger you are, when you start in the kitchen, the better. Because it's always cool to see how things evolve as time goes on. So just nice little chunks of onion like that. And I think my bowl might be a little too small. We're full up, guys. Last thing you want is scared taters yet. Yeah, they'll just run away. And then our garlic. So maybe I'll just smash some cloves and mix them up with the veggies too. That way it'll kind of get roasty and caramelized as well. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always a big fan of like finding a nice roasted clove of garlic in with my, whether it's braised meat or roasted meat. And it's also good to smash it before you peel it because that loosens up the skin. When are we getting a throwing knife stream? Never actually thrown a knife. But I have done like that ax throwing and I'm actually quite good at it. It's really fun. Have you ever used the two bowl trick for shucking garlic? I don't think I ever have Rook. To me, it just seems like too much effort to grab two bowls out when like my knife is pretty much an extension of my hand most of the time. You like to roast your garlic too. 
Just to remind them who's the boss. Classic. Okay, my dog is whining at the door because she's a butthead. Like, she could go upstairs. I'm going through the patio, but she has to go here. And then go upstairs. I don't get it. You're a butthead. She's like, it's 15 minutes before dinner. I've got to go. Your middle name came from your mom's brother, who is a really good cook, who now works as a chef for Apple. That's a pretty cool gig. Rook, you do the same. Smash it, cut off the ends, and proceed. Yeah, look how easy that was. The bowl trick is kind of nice. Oh, if you're doing the entire bulb. That makes sense. Okay, so we're not even going to cut that down any further. Into the bowl. Will I be able to mix this? Yeah, ish. We can also mix it around just a little bit in the roasting pan when we put it in there. You're trying to read up on GERD and adjust your diet a little to see if you can fix some diet issues. Well, I think I remember learning about that when I took a nutrition course. You're still adjusting to lactose intolerance. Dang it. You're lucky considering the abuse. Okay, so I'm just going over to our chicken first. We're just gonna put the shallot in there. She'd be pretty full though already of the herbs. Try and get there as far as possible though. I'm gonna wash my hands. And then we will oil and season our veggies. I'm just gonna use olive oil today, extra virgin. You have GERD as well, Matt. Wow. Well, maybe you guys can uh, talk together about it. Find a solution for Pulch. Millie, this is destiny. You have roast chicken and potatoes on hand. I love that. Is that what you're gonna make? Holy shit, what's going on upstairs? Nobody knows. So I think I want to use this salt. This is a fleur de sel. Not sure if you guys know what that is. And it just has like all of the similar herbs that we just dressed the chicken with in here. So let's use that with some pepper and olive oil. But if you just use plain salt, that would be just as good as well. Let the veggies speak for themselves. You're gonna stick a couple bulbs of garlic in. Nice. I need help. <laughs> Sam says he needs help if he walks by the window. So the drive through your window. Holy, what are you doing? I need help. Are you good? For you. What? This? Guys, I got a tank top from the liquor store and it has skulls on it. I'm Only in. about the finest from right here. Thanks, dear. This is the Ron Murder drink. Holy. Have you guys ever seen this? I've never seen this before. Baron Sandy. It, it, it was just there today. So. Spiced rum. So Sambi in French means, I believe, Saturday. Sambi. Enlivened with Haitian spice. Okay, what else did Sami get? So SOB, aka Souk Oceanside Brewery, here where I live. Sassinos Session Ale. I know, that's a good stop, hey? Bright, crisp, light-bodied, and low ABV, aka bitterness. Packed full of hot aromatics. Next one, the last one. Tidal Series Imperial Peach IPA. I am so into peaches all the time, guys. So excited for this. This is also brewed here on the island. Pumped. Good pick, Sammy. 
good picks. Okay, now for the oil. Millie, you're gonna exfoliate the chicken skin in kosher salt to get rid of its dead skin. Yeah, you always gotta show the chicken some love. <laughs> we need quite a bit of oil here. We're not gonna get too much fat coming off the chicken as it roasts. And if you don't oil your vegetables enough, they'll actually just get dry as they roast. Matt, you finally found the French cooking term. Oh, pepper. You're gonna ask if I own any animals. Yeah, you've heard the answer. We have a doggo. She's been in the family coming up on 11 years now. 77 year old doggo. Okay, in with our coarse salt, which is always a good idea for roasting as well. That way it's gonna melt in slower. And I'm just gonna do three pinches of this. Keep in mind when you're using the more coarse salt, you will need just a little bit less. A hangover in a bottle, it looks so good. I loved spiced rums. You saw it a few days ago, Polish? It's gotta be new. Okay, Matt, back to your French cooking term. So polaire, French cooking method between steaming and braising. Combination of dry and moist cooking methods. First, the food is steamed in a covered saucepan or casserole with a minimum amount of liquid. At the end of the cooking time, the heat is increased and the lid is removed until the food is fried. Ah, because the little bit of liquid will evaporate, right? That makes sense. Yeah, respect for the copyright, bruh. Good for you. Okay, hopefully we can mix this with this spoon and not have it fly everywhere. <laughs> you know a tip to avoid hangovers. Just drink a little bit of water. Exactly. I always make sure I have a water handy. But restaurants are so bad with that nowadays. It's like, here's your alcoholic drink, but you must ask for a glass of water. They just assume that you're there to get trashed. Can we do a sandwich episode? I am in. I think that's eventually what is going to, our food truck is going to be, is like sandwiches. Really, really good, simple sandwiches. With great ingredients. Monte Cristo. Yes, Rook. Great idea. Paul, oh, you haven't been to the liquor store for almost a year. You could have been there that long. <laughs> okay, let's bring our roasting pan over. I'm just going to rip a piece of parchment to put in the bottom first. And we're gonna build this masterpiece, our one pan wonder. You use a spoon of the liquid and pour it over the piece of meat a couple times. So you kind of baste it. And then you finish off the food in the oven for five minutes on high heat. Yeah, I think you'll get a much more even browning that way. We want the parchment underneath this rack. Yeah, Millie, I have seen the crystal skull, crystal skull vodka, but I've never bought it. I think if I bought it, I would just use it for the skull. It's Dan Aykroyd's vodka, seriously? I did not know that. Boom. Now this will help to keep our parchment down as well. 
think that looks great. And I think I'll pour the veg in first and then we'll nestle the chicken in the middle. I kind of have an even amount of everything in the pan here. If I turn it this way, it's probably better. That. And this. Definitely going to have leftover veg, but I'm totally okay with that. And then we just have that little bit of oil here. So we'll just pour that over. You don't want to waste it. push some of this side over just a touch just leave room in the center there for the chicken and since everyone's home I suppose we can get this cooking right away a quite bit overpriced you bought it for the skull yeah that's exactly what I do Rook. I've always eyed it up but I've never purchased it the crystal skull vodka. Oh. Whenever you're roasting veg, it's always optimal to have like one nice layer. Obviously, we're not going to get this here. So that's why we're going to have to just give it a little stir, probably two or three times as it roasts, just to ensure that it cooks evenly. Look at that happening. Let's search for famous people that sell horrible food. Epic. Yay. How does this look, Paul? Shh. Your favorite vodka was Stully. Yeah, they do make, I think, some of the best vodka. Gotta get that Polish vodka. So oven 425, that was the timer. going to take a couple of minutes to heat up. And Ina Garten has a really good recipe for this. I'll just quickly post it in chat for you guys. But you can easily base your cooking time off of this. So it says it cooks for an hour and a half. So we will see how long it actually has to cook for. I'm going to say probably like an hour and 15 and then we're gonna cook the chicken until the internal temperature reads 145 or 140 Fahrenheit, and then we'll take it out and let it rest. Because when we take it out, it's still gonna continue cooking because it stays warm. So it typically comes up around 10 degrees Fahrenheit, more than after you take it out. Where's your baby Nike? Yeah, where is he today? Yeah, I can't really drink vodka anymore either. You don't drink whiskey or bourbon anymore. You're too old for that. Typically, the old guys drink whiskey and bourbon, though. <laughs> uh. Sheep's feta. Sorry, it was actually goat feta. Goat, sheep, same, same, Alvis. What's going on, man? There we go, chicken. Okay, I guess we're getting into the peach ale. Shall I grab the purple glass to match everything else? Yes. Yes, we shall.
Maybe I poured a bit too much. Yellow. Okay. There we go, guys. Cheers. We made it through another week. Mmm. That's pretty hoppy. Cheers. Cheers, Sammy. Thirsty Thursday and Friday, Albus. Yeah, because I don't really have a weekend anymore. So I like to use my Fridays to have a drink as well. Nice pour. Thanks, man. I mean, I would hope that working at a brewery at one point would help me realize how to pour a beer. And it has. It's paid off. Okay, we are going to move on to our salad. And then we'll probably get into the pie after that. How does that sound? So we season and stuff the chicken. We cut the vegetables and season them. So next up, we'll wash our greens and our strawberries and start to make our salad. I don't have a ton of greens either for the salad. It's going to be quite small. I just thought why I thought I would steam that little bit of bok choy as well. <laughs> Sammy likes pie, if you didn't know. Just grabbing the salad spinner. Ta-da! And the greens. I just picked them this morning. So we just have this one Ziploc bag to use. You have already eaten the pie. Love it, Reno. So I always like to just put the greens into the basket and then rinse it and then put it into the spinner. You kind of use this as a strainer. You like country music and death metal? Oh, Rook. One of a kind, man. Aren't we all? And I think I'm going to take a photo of this chicken before she goes in. I think I'll wash this just in two batches. I always find the less you cram it, the better it washes and spins out. So I'm just going to sink real quick. Oh, and happy Friday the 13th, guys. I don't know if anything weird has happened to you guys, but... I've had a great day today, actually. Oh, yeah, Sammy, tell your story from the morning. So this morning, we went, we drove into work, as we normally do, Victoria. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour. We listened to this radio show on the queue with two guys that are hilarious in the morning. Anyways, today, they were throwing out of their window Bicycles. At where the radio station? At the radio station. So, my dad and I stopped at the radio station this morning. We got a bicycle thrown out the window at us. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. Okay, we're going for a spin. So, what time did you have your bicycle at? of your greens so that your dressing can stick onto it. And then typically you look at how much water came out. So we're going to pour that out before we spin out the next stuff. If you leave too much water in the bottom, it's not going to spin it out at all. Yeah, interstellar polish. And it's not the same though, because I can't take the lid off as easily on this one. Maybe we'll try and do it on the next one, but I don't think it will keep spinning like that old Tupperware we had way back when. 
that OG spinner. Pendleton, he's got to go for his walkie. Good job, Rook. You take good care of him. You got your own interstellar rig now too. It's a beast. What brand did you get? Okay, we're locked in. <laughs> yeah, Reno. Interstellar goes back to like those first few months of me streaming. OXO, nice. That's probably very similar to this. Yeah, Interstellar. Now we got lost. Where did we go, guys? Time travel. So we got more greens than I thought we would, considering we filled our typical blue salad bowl. So yay for that. organic strawberries sorry they're not local because i don't know why but the farm stand was like empty on thursday when i went in so luckily i have these organic ones from cali and let's pick out the ones that are really ripe and leave the under ripe ones It's a great way to kind of preserve the life of your strawberries. I think that's a good amount. It's good amount. And I always like to wash these because they are pretty sandy. Considering they pretty much do rest on the ground. Keep that in mind. is too good did you just crush it sammy just crushing the beers okay so now we are going to take the tops off of these and i think we'll slice it you could also quarter it really whatever you want here we'll leave it up to you guys I always like when it's sliced. So what's everyone uh, been eating today? Has anything awesome been consumed? Or are you just eating to sustain yourself? <laughs> oh, and I suppose we can uh, probably pop our food for thought discussion now, since there's a bunch of us in here together. Junk food. Well, no wonder you have a migraine, Matt. Hey, eat some veggies, bro. 
chicken parodian. Welcome in, dude. Getting some chicken in here today, too. Okay, so our food for thought discussion today is, as you were growing up, did your family have a, like, Sunday dinner tradition? Or was there a certain day of the week that you would always make sure to sit down together and have, like, a nice special meal? And if so, what was it? Escarole, yeah. No strawberries, why not? You had a PB&J, oh man, underrated. Like that is one thing that I actually find myself craving is like good PB&J sandwich. A bagel? Yeah, they did come from Cali. They are not that big though, which is nice. I don't know what it says on the package. Oh, Wish Farms. They came from Wish Farms. Natural peanut butter has you hooked, yeah. We've been uh, putting Adam's crunchy peanut butter into our smoothies. So this is actually a really nice strawberry. Maybe you should give it a little tasty taste. See if Doggo needs some. Posh. Poshy. What's this? Posh. Well, Sam has the peas, so straight up distraction. I don't know what she loves better, peas or strawberries. Okay, chicken's going in. Let's set an hour timer and then we'll check it at that point. Temp both the breast and the leg to see what we're at and adjust our time if we need. Actually, scratch that. We'll do half an hour so that we can toss around the veggies in the chicken juices. Way better. And we're leaving this uncovered. Excuse, Excuse me, me, Sam. Sorry. Shot you. I need to move this oven rack down first. Sammy is tooting on stream. I tooted. What a guy. been started. Tell God to come back. I don't know what he's doing outside. Snails are awesome with bacon. We only had them once and they are actually not bad. Not as bad as I thought they would be. Five hundred gram jar of natural peanut butter there is twelve bucks on Amazon for four. That doesn't even make sense, Polish. I think we got our big Adams jars that are one kilo. I think we got two for five bucks or something. And I thought that was a good price. God farts, so bad. And that's why we don't have smell vision. What? <laughs> oh, man. When I slice my strawberries for salad, I don't slice them very thin either. So otherwise, they just kind of fall apart. So leave it pretty chunky. It's not fit for groceries there. That's why you started the garden. Well, that's great that you did so because not a lot of people would polish. They would just suck it up and pay that price that's advertised in the store. So good for you, man. Taking care of yourself by just putting in that little bit of extra effort. Sell some farts in a can to the subs. Oh, <laughs> that's the worst time I could walk in on. <laughs> Matt, God says no. 
He's like, nah, fam. We're good. Okay, so next up, I'm going to grab the goat feta out. We're going to crumble that on top. And then we're going to make our maple candied nuts next. satisfying to grow your own just a few tomatoes and basil you've succeeded with yeah but it's still worth it and i think as you continue to do it it'll just get easier here we go guys so brand i use skotadakis and i actually got this from costco i think it was 17 dollars for this and i've had this for probably a couple months now and as long as you keep it in the brine it's not gonna go bad and they actually put the brine recipe on the package if you find that it's getting too low, which is awesome. Yeah, totally Costco, Matt. Costco, I find, is the best price for like any cheese that you want. They have such a good selection. Yeah, radishes are great, both raw and roasted. Let's do a chunk like that, maybe a touch more. You hate them, you have to deal with them on a daily basis. Why? Doing what? Hey, Rise. How's it going? Well, that's enough for the feta. Now we'll just crumble it with our hands. And I like bigger chunks rather than crumbling it really small and just having it dispersed everywhere. I like the contrast, especially with the strawberries, that like sweet and salty mix and also the creaminess from the cheese. How did the pasties go? They were really good. Really, really good. I think the filling just needed like a little bit of gravy maybe. But other than that, I think they turned out well for my first time. Most fruits and cheese pair well. Exactly, Reno. Good point. And if you're daring, buy goats or sheep's feta. It's so much more flavorful than your regular feta. And I find it's actually not as salty. It makes the sweet sweeter and the salty less salty. Yeah, totally. I mean, everyone's palate is different, but that's pretty much it, Polish. They look like they're gonna be a little tart. Yeah, they have a nice little tart bite to them, Matt. It's really, really nice, which is why I'm putting in that little bit of candied nut. So let's look at our recipe. Du, du, du. It says spicy maple nuts. So we are adding that touch of spice too, which is gonna be so good. There's the recipe guys. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do. I don't know what happened. I guess I'm not allowed to post that link. All you get is an emote. But it is posted on Discord. Guilty pleasure of dipping fries or chips in ice cream. Yes, Reno. Okay, anyways, our spicy maple nut mix. You kind of make a caramel with the maple syrup. So you use a little bit of butter. And then the spices are cinnamon, nutmeg, and cayenne, which all pair really nice together. And then two cups of nuts. You could use mixed nuts or you can just use pecans or almonds or pistachios, whatever you want. 
I do have a bunch of nuts here, so maybe we will do a little mixture and then just a touch of salt to balance it out. So I am just gonna go take my other bathroom break, thanks to the coffee, and then we will come back and start that. And then I think after this, it's time to taste the pecan pie. You don't like fries very salty. Yeah, I mean, it. I think it depends on the cut of the fry. Group pee time again, Matt. Man, I got the girl's ladder. Boop, booty doop. We're back. You are grill. You'll take the goat cheese and that's it. I'm fine with that, Matt. When did the dentist start? What? Not digging the salad, rise. To each their own. I really like this salad, though. Okay, so our first step here is we need to toast the nuts, pretty sure. Actually, no, that's a lie. It says to just preheat the oven. So it asks for 350 Fahrenheit. But since the chicken's already roasting, we'll have to use 425, but that just means that we'll have to watch the nuts a lot closer as they bake. So our first step is to melt the butter, take it off the heat, add our spices and the syrup, and then coat our nuts with that mixture. And then we'll spread the nuts on a cookie sheet and bake them until golden. It says around 15 minutes, but I'm going to say it'll probably take maybe 10 or less. And it says remove it from the oven and then sprinkle the salt on while it's still sticky and let it cool. Or you can serve them warm, kind of like an appetizer. You go home in seven minutes, so you're throwing out your bad jokes. Hilarious. You did miss the chicken rise. Yeah, it's already in the oven. But I will be taking it out in 20 minutes to give the veggies a toss. So we'll be able to look at it then. So let's get our sheet pan. Line it with some parchment. because otherwise that caramel will definitely stick onto the pan. And pie has to come off for a sec. And you obviously need a pot that will hold the two cups of nuts, so it doesn't have to be that big. Nice little sauce pot here. We need a quarter cup of butter. Uh. 
You need to stop and get booze. Go home, power smoke. And then he's back. Oh no, Matt, you had to, you had to say it. <laughs> oh my Lord. Okay, so since no one really answered my question of the day before, I'm gonna ask Sammy first. That way you guys can kind of think about it. Sammy, did you guys ever have like a Sunday dinner tradition growing up? Oh, he has his headphones on. No, no one wants to answer the question. Sammy. Did you guys ever have a Sunday dinner tradition when you were growing up? Or like a certain day of the week? No. Nope. Where you ate something special together? No. No? We ate dinner every day together. Okay. Now we know. I don't know, it was always like a pretty big thing in my family. It's like we always made sure that Sundays we would always eat together. Especially as we started to grow up. And my brother and I got older and wanted to do other things. It's like it was still a thing that Sundays you had to be home for dinner. That was one day we would all be together. Every Sunday rise. So what did you guys make then? Or did it always change? Because mine always kind of changed. But it always was something that took a little bit more time than like your usual weeknight dinner. So let's look into our nuts here. So I have some walnuts, cashews, and almonds. And since we're having pecan pie with dessert, I think I'm not gonna use pecans. So I'll just use these three. And we only need two cups. So you can choose how much you want of each. Or if you use four different kinds, you can just use a half a cup of each. You tried, Matt, but your fam was just too big. You never had a tradition of having a Sunday dinner, Pepper. It's cool to see how like other people have grown up with food in their lives. You still do Sunday dinners, but it's the whole family. That's amazing, Reno. Your Sunday routine is to sleep for 24 hours. Epic, Rook. You work so much though, dude. You need that rest. Your fam would kill each other if they did that. suppose we should uh, turn this little pot on. Let's do medium heat. Family always had roast beef, roast tatties, veg gravy, cauliflower with cheese. Yum. That's super traditional, guys. That sounds so good. No, should we give this stuff a rough chop? I think so. Before we coat it. Because I think if we try and chop it afterwards, it's just going to kind of fall off. So I'll just pour that out onto the board and then we'll chop it before we mix it in. Thing when you grill out the whole fam takes turns showing up all day. That's nice. All right, Matt, have a good commute home. Hopefully I'll see you later. Miners, thanks for the follow. Rook, you're gonna go cheap. Do a big pot of pinto beans with jalapenos and deer sausage. That sounds delicious. <laughs> I'm coming over. Yeah, I'm down. If you 
guys have a food processor, that's obviously the fastest way to kind of chop up your nuts. But I like to do it with my knife as well. We'll still keep it pretty chunky. You don't want to just make it kind of like dust and super small. Because we're trying to create that contrast in the salad with that little bit of crunch. Or, you know, you can just buy your nuts already chopped. But I find that the nuts keep a lot better when they're kept whole. And then you just chop them when you need them. And nuts also keep a lot better in the freezer, if you have space, that is. Yeah, jalapeno deer sausage sounds so good, hey? I don't think I've ever had something with venison that's been spicy. That's intriguing me, Rook. Okay, we got some chunky nuts. a little excessive there, miners. How about you don't? How about no? Ooh, our butter is melting. So we should get the maple syrup out. Well, now that's just creepy miners you will uh, probably have to see yourself out <laughs> thank you okay so now let's get out our cinnamon and nutmeg and cayenne He wanted to eat me. Ah! And cinnamon. What is up here? Could be wrong. Not wrong. So one teaspoon each of cinnamon and nutmeg. Luckily I have this refill right here. And then an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne. So we don't want to make it too spicy. But if you like spicier foods, then you can add a little bit more. His name was awful anyway. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't uh, say his full name. Yeah, because you are dog. It's true, Pepper. He saved you. He is untimed out. Let's see what happens. So this is a quarter teaspoon, so we only need half of this for the cayenne. And that can go right into the butter. And that will also just make the spices a little bit more fragrant. I'll pull out a touch more flavor from them. You said his name out loud. I know, he can trick ya. Accident. 
say it three times in the mirror and he appears. Terrifying, Rise. Terrifying. <laughs> Same with the cinnamon. I think I'm going to go a little bit less than a teaspoon. It was just a little bit excessive. I still want to taste the strawberries and the feta. Hey, Milf, how are you? We just got to refill our nutmeg. How's the day, Milf? You don't want to be eaten, though. That's good, Pepper. Don't worry, you're safe. You're safe here. You're Gucci. That's good to hear, man. I'm Gucci as well. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Use a handy dandy funnel. How about this one? Think it will work? I think we'll be able to get the spice through there. It's always cheaper to buy your spices in bags like this or in bulk and then refill the glass container. I don't know if that works the best. Maybe I'll use the one with more of a wide mouth. I definitely don't want to spill it everywhere. Yeah. Challenge. Look, we like completely plugged this guy up. Okay, we good. We good, fam. You only a little bit sacrificed. You looked up cook and I appeared. Yay. I'm popping. That's so good, Mel. <laughs> you don't want to search up Mel's name just in case. Starting to smell the stuff that's roasting in the oven. We're only five minutes away from pretty much being halfway through. So let us bring over our spices and butter. Rook, thanks for the biddies. I'm gonna head out, Lauren's home and you still need to work more. Sounds good. Hope you have a wonderful weekend, dude. And thanks for everything that you do for us. And if you end up cooking your pinto beans with the sausage, feel free to post it in Discord. I always like to see what other people cook up. Okay, so how much maple syrup? Only three tablespoons, so not even that much. Thanks, Rook. Tablespoon. Yum. I don't even know if we have enough in this little container. I think we'll make, we might have just enough. We'll empty it out. I'll get a spatula. We don't want to waste any of this stuff. That's for sure. That'd be a sin in Canada. How many of you have used maple syrup before? It's always interesting to see who uses it outside of Canada because I don't think it's that popular. Okay, so we'll just give this a little stir before we put the nuts in. It's gonna turn 
this nice dark color. There we go. Seems like a delicacy. That's what I'm thinking, Polish. It's like not really a thing. Because I wanted to measure it out, spaghetti. How did I know that there is three tablespoons if I didn't pre-measure it? We just kind of lucked out with there being the exact amount in there. You love maple syrup. Yay, Thomas. And you've used it as well, pepper. Rise, is maple syrup made from the leaves or pine cones? So it's actually, you have to tap the tree. We actually put this like little metal tube into the tree bark. And the syrup is like the sap of the tree. And it comes out clear, then you have to cook it down until it's syrupy. So it is a lot of work to make. I think we're good. There's a little bit of extra syrup in the bottom, but that'll probably just caramelize in the oven. And Sam's parents actually did it this year with some of the trees on their property and they got a lot of syrup out of it. I mean, it is hard work for a good couple of months, but I think it's worth it. It's so good. And they cooked theirs outside over a wood fire. So the flavor of their syrup is actually a little bit smoky, which I really, really like. Miss Obvious, how are you today? How's it going? Yeah, it's the sap. So now we just want to spread this out. Elvin, how are you? Good to see you in here. Wasn't sure if you'd make it or not, if you were too busy. So we just want one even layer of the nuts. You can see that little bit of extra syrup there in the center. We may just have to toss them halfway through. We will do five minute intervals just to be sure that they don't burn at the higher temp that we have to bake it at. <laughs> yeah, you walked in at the right time, Elvin. Okay, we only have 13 seconds on our chicken anyways, so we will put our nuts in and take our chicken out, give it a little tossy toss. Oh, you heard one tablespoon. Not it was three. And I'm I'm good at eyeballing, but not that good spaghetti. Gotta use the grandma eye, but I don't want to waste the maple syrup. That's the thing. Miss Obvious, I am well today. Feeling good. Okay, let's check out what's happening to the bird. Oh, we're getting some nice color already. Check it out. Nuts are going in. I'll set the five minute timer. You guys hear that sizzle? Sizzle, sizzle. Let me just put a cloth down on the board so I don't burn it with the roasting pan when I bring it over so you guys can see. You read somewhere that syrup from different regions of Canada can taste completely different. I would agree with that. I think the syrup would taste different from every tree because no two trees are the same, right? You've made caramel popcorn before with maple syrup, Pepper? Elvin, it's super busy, but nothing's gonna happen tonight on your current project. So that's a good thing, I'm guessing. I think I'm just gonna use some tongs. So we're getting some nice coloring here, which I think is the part of the bird that's like the highest. I'm a little worried about that, but I don't think it will burn. It'll probably just get really crispy. And our veggies are getting a little bit golden brown. Just wanna give them a little toss around. Mm 
you can see here, I think that's a sweet potato, how it's already kind of falling apart. So you still wanna be pretty gentle when you mix your veg around. You don't wanna mash it. Probably use a spoon is the best. And other than that, I think we're gonna put this back in for another half an hour and then we'll check the temp. Cause roasted chicken whole takes minimum one hour. I've never done a chicken that takes 45 minutes. And obviously that depends on the size. So I get pretty big chickens where I'm at. Yay, friends. It smells really good too. If you put oats on there, it could be a nutty oat cake. That would be good, Rise. I like where your head's at. So I'm just gonna wait the next couple of minutes until we check the nuts. And I think we will dig into the pecan pie. I use plastic tools for cooking. I have a mixture of everything, whether it's plastic, wooden, metal, or silicone. I do have a wide array of utensils that I use. You need, the, you need to know the terroir, the terroir for quality maple syrup. It's true. Thanks, Thunder. I really do like a simple white t-shirt. Is it already cooked? It's halfway cooked, I would say. Yeah, I like big chickens and I cannot lie. So Elvin, now that you're here, my question earlier, which I think you'll have a pretty good answer for it, is did you have a traditional family dinner growing up? whether it was like on a Sunday or a Saturday where you guys all sat down together and like had something a little bit more special with each other. Big chickens like a capon. Nah, I don't get them that big. The size that I get is called fryer chickens. Pecan pie. Yeah, don't say pecan. That's what's on a construction site. <laughs> I forget who said that. Maybe Martha Stewart. And I've always said that since then. Pecan pie. Or is it too unethical? I don't think so, Reno. Just putting the butter away and our oil. We got time to lean. We got time to clean, friends. our spices. Ten seconds. Hurry. Okay. Let's check the nuts. The newts. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that, guys those bubbles. So I think we'll go another five. I like how the maple caramel is kind of like spread out everywhere. And then we'll see what we're dealing with. <laughs> yeah, you're leaning on the counter. There will be some words said. Let's cut into this pie while we wait the other five. Plastic tools aren't good for cooking. Lots of styrene and toxic things going into your food. Sounds good, man. I mean, I like to have an open mind, but you could say the same for metal. 
wouldn't some metal leach into your food if you're using aluminum pens? I think that's a uh, one-sided opinion, but we will carry on. We're salting the nuts after they're cooked rise. So they're still gonna be sticky with the caramel, but I don't know why the recipe just said to salt them afterwards. I think you could salt them before as well and not really see a change. Actually, if you salt them before, I think the salt will just melt away into the caramel. Whereas if we salt it after with a more coarse salt, you'll get that little crunch of salt when you eat it, which is probably better on your palate, especially in a salad. Family dinner, sadly, no Elvin. Really? I thought you totally would have. Only Thanksgiving and birthdays had the extra effort. That's right, that's right. You were the one that was like the big cooker in your fam. So growing up, I could, I could see that. Yeah, culinary wasteland. Shadow, how are you? Nina Fan, welcome in. Okay, we got three minutes. Let's cut this pie. Let's get into it. Ta-da! And what do I want to use? Probably a cheaper knife here. Hmm, maybe I will use this little serrated one. Is that true about the plastic tools? I don't think so, Thunder. So I honestly don't think they would make them if they're going to kill you. But I'm pretty sure like everything in the world slowly kills you, so I don't know. Paul, she got a bit of weights in. I was wondering where you went for like the last half an hour. Some deadlift is better than none. Exactly, dude. Like I just made a little bit of time today before lunch and made sure that I did my yoga. Oh, that crispy crust. She be gooey in there. And I haven't put this in the fridge yet, so I don't know what I am really cutting into yet. Hopefully it's not too gooey in the middle still. It looks pretty perfect. Ah, you've been lurking just watching while painting. Fair enough, dude. Lurking is still better than nothing. It's Thanksgiving at my house. Pretty much, hey, Thunder? Hilarious, this meal. Well, Paul asked for a really good Sunday dinner. We gotta pull out all the stops for him. Reno, we've been waiting. You know what? So have I. Okay, I think we are all the way through. Let's uh, get our slice out. And then we can dress it after the nuts come out, I think. Because they're gonna come out in around a minute from now. All right, pie. Don't fail me now. Maybe I didn't cut all the way through. Try it again. Ooh wee. <laughs> that side view though. That layer of deliciousness. Sugar and eggs and vanilla and nuts. That's all it is. And if we look in here, you can tell how crispy the top is. Look at that, perfect. It definitely set up, which is great, considering I haven't put it in the fridge yet. Better than side boob rides. Oh my God. Okay, yeah, that's definitely getting caramelized. So you can see the edges here are getting a little bit more dark, which is great. So I think I'll just give this a little toss over on the stove top and let it cool off. Kind of spread it out as well if I can. 
but I think that's enough because you can tell that the nuts are also toasted a bit. So that's all we really need to do. And then as it cools, our caramel will harden up. Fair enough, spaghetti. I think anything kills us slowly. Armored, how are you? <laughs> what do I want to use to break this up? Maybe even this like fork will be good. Kidnap me for the cooking. to eat that piece. It was hanging off. Perfect timing, Armored. <laughs> Reno. I love that. Yeah, eating Tide Pods is bad, but apparently it's still a thing. WTF. I saw that too hard. It goes crazy? Yeah, it goes okay, so hard. Sammy... Uh, whipped us up some cream in our whipping siphon. The seal is in it, <laughs> so it actually worked, but we still don't have a tip, so if I press it too hard, it goes insane. So wish me luck, guys. And who here has ever taken a can of aerosol cream and put it into their mouth? There's got to be one or two of you in here that are dirty like that. Pecan pie makes you want to get on one knee. Yeah, we got lots of nuts going on today. Nuts. Nuts everywhere. You've never had pecan pie? Oh, no. Yeah, my little dungarees. It's actually just an apron, guys. So it actually just cuts off above my knee. And this is actually specially made for me. Okay, ready? Thunder, you've done it so many times, not surprised. So it looks kind of funny when you just press on it a bit. Look at this little like string that <laughs> comes out. I die. So we'll go a little bit more, a little bit more now. Oh my God, ah, it's still coming out. We can't stop. Look at that little like poop swirl right there. Now that is straight up skills. Like you can see through it. Yeah, Sammy whipped the cream in the siphon for me. Small sprig of mint. You think the mint would be good on this? with the pecans. Sammy is not a huge chocolate mint fan, but that would look nice, Reno. I don't know if it would pair nicely with the flavors. Chug it, Thunder. I don't know. I don't know if I can do that yet. Gotta love that poop swirl skills. Okay, now we can taste it. Taste a taste. Hell yeah. Just been waiting two days for this. Chug, chug, chug. Will she crumble under the pressure? It would go better with a cream pie. I agree. So I don't think I'm even gonna have the first bite. Let me give it to Sammy considering he asked for it. So we're gonna load it up for him. He's playing some Fortnite right now. So there's his spoonful. 
The sprig of mint would just look make it look pretty. Open the mouth. The airplane's coming in. <laughs> Is that one better than the other one I made? That's good, Gary. <laughs> yeah, chug the whipped cream. Chef comes in to watch and he's just like, I don't know about this girl. 9-11 flashbacks. <laughs> okay, I'm getting in here. The face of pure bliss. I think so. When you like gotta close your eyes and enjoy the moment like that. Now it's my turn. Mm-hmm. So obviously the crust is not too thin because it's not falling apart. And I really like the crunch that it gives, especially on like the top part around the rim. The pecans have a nice crunch because they were toasting for an hour as this baked in the oven. And I guess I would call it a custard. It's really nice. And surprisingly, like I would think this would be too sweet because there is two and a half cups of sugar. So a cup and a half of corn syrup and a cup of sugar. But the recipe didn't call for salt, so I added a teaspoon of salt. So I think that's what helped to kind of balance everything out. Yeah, it got the nod of approval. That's all you need. You are magically hungry again. Yes, Reno. Rise, you like Sammy's pants? What does he have on today? Oh, the new Minion pants. Yeah, his mom sent him those from Ontario. She's like, you need new pajamas. Typical mom thing. Okay, that's it for the pie. So happy National Pecan Pie yesterday. And we will, I guess, finish off the salad. I'm gonna chop up some fresh basil to put on the salad as well. Strawberries, basil, and feta is a really good combo together. Don't know if you guys have tried it before, but I would recommend it. Let's just grab our basil out. And we will carry on. <laughs> we're just like, we're done with this spaghetti troll. It's like, bro, enough with the negativity. We know that everything is killing us. We would like to forget about that for a little bit though. It's pecan here. Yeah, pecan. <laughs> pecan. Pecan. Oh yeah, this is getting crunchy. Mmm. I forgot to salt it. It might be too late now. So you know what I'm gonna do? Grind it on. That way it's just a little bit smaller. Hopefully it'll still melt in. Let's bring our salad back. He's having a bad day. I think so. Yeah, maybe he just needs a little bit of pie. Okay, let's do a little bit of choppy chop. The nuts are still just a touch warm, so we don't want to put those on something delicate like salad greens because they will wilt very quickly. The sweetness of the basil complements them both. Exactly. So I have this full bag of basil thinking maybe I need to make some pesto and I think I'll do the four leaves <laughs> yeah worried about plastic come on man just gonna give them a little rinsey rinse And 
then I think we'll just uh, chiffonade this, which means really thin strips. And the way I like to do it is to stack the basil leaves up. And I usually do the biggest one on the bottom first and then cascading to the smallest one so that we can do this, roll it together so it doesn't fall apart. Make a little basil spliff, if you will. Cut off our stems. Those are pretty tough. That's basil. I don't know the kind of it. Let me go check because we still have the little tag in there. two words. Grind them up in prep and freeze them in an ice cube tray. Yeah, that's a great way to do it as well, Armored. Just make like little herb nuggets and just pop them in the freezer and take them out when you need it. But I find that when you freeze it, it likes to turn brown. I don't really know how to get away from that. There's our basil, so you'll just have nice little strings. You're in the wrong end of the country. Stuff does grow really well out here. All right, Pepper, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I will be back on Monday. If you feel like watching it, and I haven't planned any of the menu yet. Probably gonna do a little bit tonight after the stream. Sounds good to you. You're gonna look into it next time. Yeah, maybe you can get a seed variety. I've never grown any herbs from seed though. So that would be a new thing for me as well. <laughs> Frankenstein farm. Oh yeah, you guys should see the tomatoes. I will post it in the gardening section in Discord right now. The tomatoes at the farm are like this big already in the greenhouse, but obviously they're not quite ripe. I totally forgot to post that for you guys though. So. I just uh, walked by the greenhouse the other day on my way out. I was like, oh my goodness, those look amazing. Okay, incoming. So the nuts should be cooled off now, then we're just gonna top the salad with them. You don't have to use the whole two cups. You can definitely reserve some for maybe just snacking on, which is totally okay. I think we will only use half. Yum and just kind of evenly disperse them over top. So that your little bit of fruit and cheese and basil still peeks out. Looks so good. You made a hanging planter stand like a couple months ago. Use it yourself to grow some herbs outside. Yeah, do it up, man. Monday menu. You want ribeyes? Bring out all the sauce for you. I think we might be having beef on Sunday though. So I'll keep you posted on that one, Elvin. I don't know what's going to get cooked up for me because I'll be at worky. But I am doing two whole steelhead trouts at some point next week. I totally don't narrate. I'm so quiet. Like when I'm focused, I don't talk at all. Obviously I need to talk to you guys to explain everything. 
which I think actually makes me better at what I do. So now best best thing about parchment is that it can actually be used to pour out whatever you need to pour out. So just gather up the edges and then put it into your container. Oh, I thought this was going to fit in this cup, but I don't think so. Whatever doesn't fit, we'll just put onto the salad. Got to make enough room for the lid to fit on. And then look, we got a clean sheet pan still. Winning! You had issues getting your tomatoes to bloom. Unless you shook the plant, they would flower. Aww. Lack of bees, yeah, for sure. So maybe you just need a little bit more flowers in your garden by your tomatoes to kind of draw the bees in. I did notice that I had some buds that fell off that weren't pollinated either. So it happens. And that's that's pretty sad, right? Is like that could have been food, but without the bees there, it's not gonna grow. So there is that problem in the world is we are definitely losing our bees at an accelerated rate. Okay, salad is done -zo. So what's next? Not really sure guys, we're just waiting on our chicken. So we got 10 minutes to kill. I don't know if you guys wanna have a little fun and have story time today. Oh, actually, sorry, I lied. We still just have to steam our bok choy tops. So it's like sprouted bok choy where it started to flower and I just trimmed it off. So let's do that. I think I'm gonna go throw this into the fridge to keep it nice and cool. And then we will do our last little bit of things. Maybe first though, we'll fill our steaming pot and get it hot. Cause if our chicken is done in the next 10 minutes, then we don't have too much time to kill anymore well guys you were kidding about the ribeyes never kid about ribeyes elvin you know that is serious stuff yeah i would love to eat a ribeye on a monday <laughs> so we only want to fill our steaming pot with enough water so that our steaming tray, when we fit it into it, does not touch that water. So if it's coming up through the holes, you need to just take a little bit out, which I can see it's just touching it. So just purge a little bit of that water. And now we can turn this guy onto medium high should be good to go do a little dance you the, use the dandelion greens in your salads hopefully they're not too bitter sometimes the dandelion greens can be bitter okay going to put this away so it can stay cool and then we'll do our bok choy am i leaving the chicken until sunday no we're eating it today but paul sh requested something along the lines of like a Sunday roast dinner. And so I did chicken and root vegetables because that's typically what my mom made for us. in here <laughs> you spent too much time tearing those assholes out of the front yard when we moved into this property now polish there was just dandelions everywhere betty could not stand it so over the last couple of months she's been doing her work trying to get rid of all the dandelions and the grass is looking a lot better now I know all the bananas. 
That's it, Thunder. One left. Helicopter, how are you? Let's grab our little bok choy pieces here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, because you probably don't understand. I serve food in plastic bowls? What are you talking about? That was a glass bowl. And how are you back here? I'm donezo. Donezo, guys. I'm having too good of a day. So here is our sprouting bok choy. So we have our little bok choy leaves. And then our little flowers, AKA like baby broccolis. But even when they bloom, like this guy, the flowers are still edible and they're actually really sweet. So I thought instead of me throwing this out, we'll just quickly steam them up and serve them fresh with the chicken and the root veg. And then I also have to go grab out some of that gravy that I made yesterday. I know it's beef, but I think it's still going to be really good with this because it's pretty light in color. He's so salty. Oh, that guy has been going off pretty much all stream helicopter about how bad plastic is to cook with. <laughs> He's crazy craziness and I don't know if I'm really going to trim this up I mean we are going to serve dinner with a knife so I think it would be totally fine to just leave it like this and I do have a sort of bowl that I would like to plate in but I really have no idea where it is I think I'm going to ask Betty so I'm going to run away real quick I'll be back in probably a minute and I'll let you know what happens. So we're just waiting for that water to come up to a boil anyways. So I'll be back in a minute.
Okay, guys. No luck. We don't know. Stuff's kind of spread out everywhere right now. But I think I'm just going to use a wooden tray. So I think this guy will probably be big enough to fit the chicken. I'll just put a little bit of the vegetables around and maybe some of the bok choy. We'll kind of pile it up, make use of our space. Why is the oven extractor holding a cupboard open? So that is the clamp for the overhead cam. And because of the hood vent, we couldn't really clamp it on this because of the angle. Whereas if it was just straight and flat, it would be no problem. So we had to use the cupboard handle on the door to clamp the camera onto. You're offended by the anti-plastic propaganda. Me too, Paul. I'm just like not a huge fan of people putting their opinions onto others who obviously don't feel or think the same. Like why even waste your time? Like you, you've got to have something better to do. Hey, look at this bird though. Oh my goodness. You guys aren't even ready for this. Do you hear it though? Oh, hello there. Hello there, chicken that we have given so much love today. So time for the thermometer. Yeah, please just use a plastic tray. <laughs> no problem, Rise. Plastic Island, yeah, we get it. Okay, so to temp the legs, holy, the skin is so crispy. We want to go right in the center here, right by the bone. And then to tempt the breast, you just want to go right in the center. So let's check our leg first. I think this guy is done. We're very close to it. We'll probably just be able to foil it and let it rest. Okay, so I'm reading like 192. So that's definitely done. Check the other one just in case. Oh yeah, she's good. And now the breast is pretty big on this, so that could be a little bit different, but I think we good. Yeah, we're better than good. 153. But there is still juices coming out. And to preserve that, we're just going to let this rest. Now, all we got to do is kind of check our root veg. So look for the biggest piece and just kind of poke it with your knife. If it goes through easy and it's tender, you're good to go. So all of this is great. So we're gonna let that rest until our bok choy is done. And to rest it, I'm just gonna put a little piece of foil over, not completely flatten it down over the edges because we don't wanna steam this. We just wanna keep it warm while our juices get evenly dispersed. Yeah, I think we did good today, guys. I don't know if I can get a little bit closer because this thing's pretty big, but that color is perfect. Crispiest skin ever. So just kind of, it's called tenting. Just make your little foil tent over the bird. Like that, and that's it. Totally okay if there can be air movement around it. Now we will say goodbye to the pie for a sec. And we'll just put that on the stove top to keep it warm. So that was an hour. So good thing we didn't do the hour and a half like the recipe said, because we would have really, really dry chicken and mushy veg. How is our water doing? Nothing really, so I'm gonna turn it on to the big burner. Get this guy rolling. And then we can do our plate up, take our photo as always, and then have a taste test and see how we did. 
best part about that thermometer is it has a magnet so I just keep it on the hood vent always okay and then before we finish so Liz was the top cheer of the week so far she did $20 worth for a tip and then so far I believe we have delusional idiot at the top of our cheer board. So I will be contacting those two people unless anyone kind of tries to top that by the end of the stream, but don't feel obligated to at all. And hopefully they will have some requests for me to make on stream next week. Let's get our plate out, but we're ready to plate. Okay, now our water is boiling. Perfect. Hey, Jcore, how are you? So these bok choy tops, I don't think they'll take very long to steam. I think we'll be able to fit them all in here. Maybe a couple minutes. just until the stem is tender because that's going to be the toughest part. The leaves will cook in probably a minute. Kind of just mash them all in there and then you definitely want to put your lid back on. And to rest our chicken, so you really want to rest that for minimum, I would say 10 minutes. Maximum, you can actually go up to half an hour and the chicken will still be hot when you carve it up, which is shocking, but anything with like a whole big piece of meat, that is gonna keep the heat in a lot longer. Plastic plates, yeah, Paul, those actually don't exist in my kitchen. <laughs> Reno, just dying. Jay, you're making meatloaf. That sounds so good for a Friday dinner. Wow. All right. See ya. Brush that ish off. Why so aggressive? <laughs> People are insane in this world. Turkey meatloaf cups. Oh, that's a great way to do some meal prep, Jay. I like it. What incarnation is going on today? I don't know. I am okay with it though. Gotta take those haters. Always gotta take the good with the bad guys. Half part ketchup, half part barbecue sauce. That is the way to do it. Because sometimes the ketchup can just be a little too sweet. Oh, that makes sense, Thunder. See, Friday the 13th. Hey, these are getting close. Because the tips are turning a bright green color. Typically how I know when any green vegetable is done. It's, it's gonna turn very vibrant compared to more of that pale green when it's raw. Yeah, come on, Armored. Step up your trolling game. Yeah, doing anything terrifying. You only get half a portion of pecan pie today. No! Okay, let's check it. This guy's going nuts, though. So once again, just gonna use my paring knife to poke into the bottom part of the stem. It's going through easily, so we are good. I'm just gonna take that off the heat so it doesn't overcook. So I'm gonna plate up the chicken now. So I'm gonna bring the roaster over and we're just gonna transfer a little bit of everything onto our wooden tray. Yeah, they need my cooking. The cooking is the cure. 
They just don't even know. And I think by the time we actually cut into this and like finish our photo and chatting, should have rested for 10 minutes. We'll be good. Just gonna use, I think, our tongs. So obviously the most important thing here is transferring our chicken. And then we'll just fit whatever veg we can onto the plate. Jay, I am from Canada, so I live on Vancouver Island. <laughs> please, Armored, please put the pineapple on my pizza. And hopefully as we lift this, the legs don't just come out. If we cooked it perfectly, it will be close. I could feel this one is super loose. But look at all this juice. Ah, okay. <laughs> look at this bone from the leg. I literally just pulled it out. AKA it's perfectly cooked. We'll just put that back in there for photo purposes. Get back in there, bone. But dang guys, I think we did so good today. Oh my God. Why? You can't even spell Ramsey right. You are actually not a good person. You've actually been to Victoria, Jay? That is so awesome. Okay, I don't want to ruin the veg with the tongs because if we squeeze it, I think it'll fall apart. So let's use a spoon here. And look at this. So remember our garlic that we left whole? There's our roasted clove. Oh, it's totally the spaghetti guy. But man, you can't even spell Ramsey right. Grow up. Having none of it. Where are the mods? I believe they're all playing video games, which honestly I'm okay with. I can mod on my own. I don't give a heck what people think. We got potatoes in here. German butter potatoes. We have rutabaga, aka turnip, carrots from the farm, and sweet potatoes. So a nice little medley of root veg going on. I think this looks so good. Now we're just going to kind of dot it with our steamed bok choy. And I love how the flowers still stay intact, even though they are steamed. Adds like a nice little contrast. Just kind of hide them in there. Get in there. So you always need that little bit of greenery. It just helps with digestion, especially something heavy with root veg. That, and maybe one more over here. I think we're good guys. This looks so great. I try not to swear on stream, Jay, because I don't have it as explicit. Try and keep it PG. Okay, Paul, what do you think, man? Sunday rose dinner, healthy-ish style. Oh, that's so cool, Jay. You did a cruise to Alaska. I've heard that's really nice. I do have the beef gravy still thunder. I can just throw it in Chef Mike for a sec. Okay, I'm gonna go take a photo of this and then we'll do taste to taste. Yeah, she's always here. She's like, oh, it's time to eat. I am here. There's definitely quite a bit of chicken juice in the bottom of this tray though. So do you really need the gravy or do you just want to use the jus? Totally up to you, but I know some people like the thicker gravy. Just because I think it coats better.
you fail at keeping it PG. I am pretty bad in the kitchen. I get a quite a potty mouth because I'm always just working with like the guys. It's always been me and the guys. So to carve this guy up, you should be able to honestly just kind of pull it apart. I know you're able to take this leg bone out, which makes it very easy to eat. Obviously, we're not going to throw that meat out. And then to carve our breast, there is a center bone there. So just carve along it once you feel it. And then we should be able to just peel it off the bone. Try not to, to disturb that uh, crispy chicken skin too much. But yeah, it's still nice and juicy in there. I'm glad we checked it when we did. And then typically you can just cut kind of where it attaches to the wing all the way along. Once you have it loosened, it's not the cleanest butchery. Obviously I'm using a paring knife, but the cooking is done. It's time to eat. So there's our chicken breast, keeping the skin intact. And now I can slice it for you guys. Why are you like this? Like, why are you like this? I'll just uh, let karma deal with that. And let's get the real knife now. And it should just slice through like butter. Definitely still steam and hot. So there we go. It could be a little bit less cooked. You can see how the proteins are just like a little bit pasty there compared to the top part is a lot more juicy. So I would have liked to take this out probably 10 degrees sooner, but obviously every chicken is different in size. So that will come with the more birds that you roast whole. It's okay, Thunder. I really don't give a heck. I've still done something awesome for you guys, and I'm not gonna let that kind of person stop us from having a good time. Okay, let's have a little tasty taste. Totally just eating with my hands today. I don't even think I'm gonna plate it. I just wanna post the photo of the tray. Mmm. I would say we perfectly seasoned it. But yeah, just a touch dry, just a touch. So this is where a lot of people will turn to the gravy to just kind of moisten up their chicken. So gravy can be kind of like a fallback if your meat is too dry. And it shouldn't be that way. It should just be like there to accompany the rest of the meal. It's okay, Death, we're totally cool. Rutabaga. I think the carrots look the best though. Like, just perfectly caramelized. <laughs> yeah. We gotta serve it on plastic. Gotta do it justice. Thanks, Polsh. I mean, this was for you, man. So, really, I just need your approval. Mmm. Literal vegetable caramel. Why are garden carrots so good, though? <laughs> this is just getting too good. Death, this is like the fourth time he's come back in with a different account, so I feel like he's not going to stop. Okay, let's have a little taste of our sweet potato. I think this will give good contrast to the rest of the meal.
I think the veggies season perfectly too. Dare I try this little bok choy? I mean, this is just going to be more juicy than anything because we didn't even season it. I just wanted it there to kind of palate cleanse the rest of our heavy meal. I don't know how he knows who death is. Mm-hmm. So it's not as tough as I thought it would be. It is a little bit bitter though. So I think having those sweeter vegetables in there will be perfect with the rest of it. I'm down with this meal, guys. I think we are gonna call it quits for today. Sweet potatoes or oranges? How come you're still like normal potato? So there's a couple different kinds of sweet potato. Is there is sweet potato with a white flesh and there's also the other ones which are also called yams. Oh my God. My dog is digging under the dishwasher because obviously I dropped something there. I have no idea what it is. I can't see anything. He's being wild. All right, Halsh, did you uh, happen to get streaming by chance? Or are you not going on tonight? Because I would love to raid you if so. No problem, Halsh. You the best. Shout out to my East Coast brah. Make bang. Thanks, Elvin. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Do, do, do. Or we have sushi day on. I do enjoy rating sushi day. I mean, we're all kind of connected, aren't we? Thanks, Jay. Thanks, everyone. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Okay, that's going on. We're going to go raid sushi day then. Fellow cooking streamer whom I adore. And we do have quite a few of the same viewers, so let's do it. Thanks for all the love today, guys. All of the new subs this week, the bits, the donations, it all counts for something. And if you're just here to watch, that counts for something too. As long as you have learned something from my stream, that's all I really care about. And I will be back on Monday. I do work on Saturdays and Sundays, so I don't stream those days, and I probably never will. Have a good one, guys.